Hello grade 11s, welcome to this lesson on the universal gas equation. In another lesson, we derived this equation from three other gas equations. In this lesson, we will solve problems with the equation. Remember that the universal gas constant, R, in this equation has a value of 8,3. But what are the units of this constant? R's units affect the units we should use in the universal gas equation. So let's start with a reminder of how we calculated R in the other lesson. These are the values we substituted into the combined gas equation, which gave us 8,3. In other words, R. Let's add the units we used in the equation. Kilopascal, decimeters cubed, divided by mole Kelvin. So R can be written as 8,3 kilopascal decimeters cubed divided by mole Kelvin. But this is not how we normally give R's unit. A kilopascal is a thousand times more than the system international, SI, unit for pressure, the pascal. A decimeter cubed is a thousand times less than the SI unit meters cubed. These two effects cancel one another out so that kilopascals times decimeters cubed is the same as pascals times meters cubed. So we can write R's unit as pascal meters cubed divided by mole Kelvin. A pascal is a newton per meter squared, so these units simplify as newton meters divided by mole Kelvin. A newton meter is also called a joule. So the unit of R is joules divided by mole Kelvin. This can also be written as joules times mole to the minus 1 times Kelvin to the minus 1. When we use the universal gas equation, we need to convert all the values to SI units. Mr. Mashapa tells us more about this. Now the ideal gas equation, as we have it here on the board, it's pressure multiplied by volume is equals to the number of moles multiplied by the universal gas constant multiplied by the temperature, remember, in kelvins. But now, whenever we have to use this equation, take note of the following. Always, you have to stick to the SI units, the system international units, so as to get our units for pressure volume product as the joules. So from here, we can look at the SI unit for pressure. Now pressure, the unit should be, remember from definition, pressure is a force per unit area. So which is a Newton for force divided by the area squared, which gives us a Newton per meter squared, right? And now this is equals to a Pascal, right? So the SI unit for pressure would be a Pascal. Now, the next one, volume. SI unit for volume is meter cubed. So always when you use this equation, Remember that now your volume, even if it can be given in cubic centimeters, you have to change that to cubic meters. Right. The next one would be the temperature. Now our temperature, as you realize that now, previously we ended up talking of the temperature being measured in kelvins. Now capital K there. And... Of course, our universal constant as given there is 8,3 joules per mole per Kelvin. Remember that when we answered this question in the other lesson, we did not convert to SI units. Let's answer it again, this time with SI units. Kelvin and mole are already in SI units, but we need to convert this number. 
kilo means a thousand, so 120 kilopascals equals 120,000 pascals. We substitute into the equation and solve. The answer is 0 0,097. This seems to be a different answer to what we got before, 97 decimeters cubed. However, they are actually the same. If we use SI units throughout, the answer will also be in SI units. As Mr. Mashapa explained, this is meters cubed for volume. We multiply by 1000 to convert meters cubed to decimeters cubed. 0 0,097 meters cubed is the same as 97 decimeters cubed. So in fact, when we use the universal gas equation, we can use kilopascals as long as we also use decimeters cubed. This is because the factors cancel out to have the same effect combined as the SI units. Let's join Mr. Mashapa again. Now, I want us to try a problem using this equation. I already have the problem on the board here. Now, I want you in your groups to work out this problem and try to get the answer. Can we do that now? What is the answer to Mr. Mashapa's question? Be careful to convert to SI units. So grams must be converted to moles decimeters cubed to meters cubed and temperature to Kelvin. The element nitrogen has a molar mass of 14 grams. But nitrogen gas always exists as the diatomic molecule N2. The molar mass of N2 is double that of elemental nitrogen. 28 grams per mole. To find the number of moles in 7 grams of N2, we divide by the molar mass, 28 grams per mole. Notice how these units cancel and leave the unit mole. We have 0 0,25 moles of nitrogen. It is easy to convert to Kelvin. We simply add 273. There are 1,000 decimeters cubed in 1 meter cubed. Notice how these units cancel and leave meters cubed in our answer. Now we are ready to substitute these values into the general gas equation. PV equals nRT. We make P the subject of the equation and we solve. We know the answers unit is Pascal's because that is the SI unit for pressure. For this equation, all values should be in SI units. This number is very large, so we should convert it to kilopascals. We divide this number by a thousand and then we round off our answer. Let's join Mr. Mashapa and his learners as they discuss the answers they got for this question. For group 1, they had 1,11 times 10 to the power 5 pascals. Now if we have to change pascals to kilopascals, what must we do? Divide by 1,000. And then from there, if you divide this by 1,000? See, I'll just, uh, I think we've made a mistake here, uh, changing 1 times 10 to the power 5 to kilopascals. Are you group 2? Yes, sir. All right. Wait, we are coming to you. Let's look at group 1 first. Okay. Sir. We'll get to yours. Our answer is going to be 111,2 one, 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 because we converted. Did you divide 1? comma one one times ten to the power five by a thousand. Yes. Could you just check with your calculators guys? Use your calculator, you divide one comma one one. Exponent five by a thousand. Triple one sir. Triple one. Yes. yes. Do you agree this is wrong? Yes. So shall we erase this and have it this way? Yes. yes sir. Satisfied now? Yes, sir. Then let's get to group two. Group two, you had it as 111160,72 pascals. And I said to you, remember guys, this now might confuse most of us. I wanted you to give it in uh, scientific notation, and then you had it as 
1 times 10 to the power 5 pascals. Mm. Then I asked you to change it to kilopascals. Then you got that. Is that correct? That's mm. not correct. That's not we correct. made a mistake. You made a mistake. Yes, sir. So do you agree that uh, we have to erase this and write the correct answer? Yes. Now, using your calculators, what answer do you get? The correct answer is triple 1.2. Now, rounding off numbers, okay, right? Triple one comma two. Well, that's less than five, so we'll just take it as that. Right, guys, let's look at these answers. There is something which is interesting here. You worked the same problem, and two groups got the same answer, and the other group got a different answer. What could be the problem? Uh, we seem to have a problem when converting the number of moles. So we have to divide the molar mass by the mass number. So some of us tend to forget that nitrogen is a diatomic. Diatomic molecule. Yes. Excellent, super. You remember when we were in grade 10, when we dealt with these gases, we realized that now, gases such as, which other gases are diatomic? Ntabi saying? Oxygen. Oxygen. Yes, Cabello? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Yes. All right. Now, I want you guys to tell me, from the three answers, which one do you think is correct? Right, Hopula? I think it's the answer from group one and group two. Are those the correct ones? Yes, because they have something in common there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because they are common. Are you, are you thinking at these answers because, are you voting, saying that now, okay, right, we have, these are the same, therefore, that should be correct? Not actually like voting, but the position that you have taken, so I don't think it should give us a wrong answer. Right, okay. By the way, Leti has explained that nitrogen is a dye. Atomic, yes, sir. right? Now, if you look at these answers, what does that mean to you? But uh, let me tell you, we did we much uh, the relative atomic mass for nitrogen is fourteen. Right. Then we multiplied fourteen by two. Okay. That gives us twenty-eight, and we divided seven grams by twenty-eight, which okay. is the molar mass. All right. It gave us. So, right. comma two five grams per mole of right. nitrogen. Okay. Yes. So this group only used fourteen. Yes. Sir. You use fourteen instead of twenty eight. Yes. Okay. Right. Fine. So, do you agree that now these the first two answers are correct? Yes. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mashapa, and your learners. That's the end of this lesson. Remember to check the other lessons in this series, particularly the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.